Hey bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me, and today we're going to be looking at sort of the what happens if for one of the questions that I get asked the most often, which is, you know, I don't like the sounds of or I don't happen to have an emulsifying wax, so can I use beeswax instead? And it's sort of easy to see how you can get there if you have never made a lotion before or worked with emulsifying wax, because they both have wax in the name, right? Unfortunately, that is where the similarities stop, sort of like an egg yolk and a pylon. They are both orange, and that is all they have in common, and unfortunately that one similarity doesn't mean that you could really use them for one another. It would be a terrible cake, and that construction zone would look sort of like the Humpty Dumpty murder scene. <laughs> so in the interest of making this as sort of science experimenty as possible, I'm going to be using the lotion recipe that I used in my basic how to make a lotion video, except instead of emulsifying wax, I'm going to be using beeswax. So other than that, the recipe is identical. So if you are unfamiliar with lotion making and you want to see how a lotion that actually comes together and does emulsify works, go check out that video and then you can compare it to this one to see how they're different. So for the purposes of this experiment, the wax that I'm going to use that's not working is beeswax, but there's lots of other waxes that you could use that also wouldn't work. So in that category includes beeswax, candelilla wax, carnauba wax, and soy wax. So those are all sort of hardening waxes. Or you can also look at waxes that are more fragrant and are derived from flowers and fruits like orange wax or rose wax. None of those will work. In the category of does work, we have things like polo wax, emulsifying wax, NF, emulsimuls, also known as read emuls, depending on where you're shopping, and BTMS 50. And the 50 part of that is important. Don't use BTMS 25, that won't work. So if you wanna make this lotion and you want it to work, use any of these four complete emulsifying waxes instead of the beeswax. And if you want to repeat my failure, you can use anything from over here. Okay, let's go break a lotion. We'll start by combining our oils. So here we have 14 grams of sunflower oil, five grams of shea butter, and you can use refined or unrefined shea butter, and six grams of beeswax. And so remember, this is not going to work. Please don't do this at home. If you want to make a lotion with this recipe at home, that needs to be a complete emulsifying wax. And then we'll get our water part together. So there I have 73 grams of water, and in there is two grams of vegetable glycerin. So I'll combine them, and there we go. So now I'm going to put both of these heat resistant measuring cups in a water bath. So this is a wide flat bottom saute pan that has about an inch or three centimeters of water in it. And we're using this to create a double boiler. So I'm going to go put this on the stove top over medium heat for about 20 minutes to melt everything in here through and to bring the water up to heat and hold which helps kill any bacteria and give it a longer shelf life in addition to of course the inclusion of a broad spectrum preservative. Now because I know this is not going to work and I'm going to be throwing it out right away the heat and hold stage isn't hugely important but process you know got to keep it as uh, because this is an experiment we want as few variables as possible so heat and hold we do. So our heat and hold phase is over, so we can add our water mixture to our oil mixture. And so you can immediately see that it's just beating up on top here. So I'm gonna give this a stir. And again, you're not getting any of that milky whiteness that you would get with an emulsifying wax. So I'll grab our blender and give this a blast. So that has come together a little bit. Because beeswax thickens so much harder than, or so much faster than emulsifying wax, and it's just, it's an actual wax, it has started to solidify up the sides of the container and on the top of the immersion blender here. So I'm just scraping that down. So it's quite lumpy again because of that faster, uneven, set up because the beeswax is so much thicker than so much thicker than emulsifying wax with a much um, higher melting point. Give that another blast here. 
And so I can already see that this is separating. When I give it a blast, water starts to shoot out of it. So that's water that's pulled out of the, uh, through the very weak emulsion that we had there for a minute or two. So you can see here that this has separated. There's a bunch of water down here, and then we have kind of our oily bit here, and it's just like cheese curds, basically. So, and the more we stir it, the more water leaps out of the oil part to hang out on its own. There's no way to save this. I'm gonna be throwing this away um, <laughs> imminently. But yes, there you go. If you've ever wondered why you can't use beeswax instead of emulsifying wax, here's why. This is what happens. It just it doesn't it doesn't work at all. That is not a lotion in any stretch of the word. And the longer we leave this, the more water is just oozing out of this part here. So you could I mean you could spread this on your skin sort of right now, and it would be like fine. But it's going to be uh, really quite heavy and waxy like you can see that doesn't like that's not really a lotion like it's quite greasy and sticky and like not not very nice and yeah so when a recipe calls for emulsifying wax use emulsifying wax and so make sure you're using a complete emulsifying wax so something like emulsimulse or Redemulse, btms 50 emulsifying wax nf or pola wax. If you use an incomplete emulsifying wax, so something just like stearic acid, which is sometimes sold as an emulsifying wax, uh, you're going to find that the results are pretty similar to this. So, thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned something. Please subscribe and check the description box below for uh, the full sort of written recipe and some links to some helpful FAQ articles on emulsifiers. All right, see you next time.